So welcome back to the Bitcoin Day Trader channel. Today I'm going to teach you how to get your private keys from the Bitcoin Android wallet. So it's today about this wallet. Some people call this wallet the Schildbach wallet because it's created by Schildbach. I'm going to teach you guys how to get your private keys from this wallet. You need to pick up your phone and go to the right top corner. You see three little dots. In that list you see safety. You want to back up your wallet. You give it a password. Bitcoin day trader and you need to do that again press ok it asks you to archive it this is important because you need it on your PC because we're gonna do this on the PC and send it with Gmail for instance to your email account your Gmail account or whatever so I'm gonna send it to the Bitcoin day trader channel at Gmail send message ok so that's the first part you have to do. We have to back up our wallet. After you've backed up your wallet, you need to get it from wherever you backed it up. I used my Gmail. That was for me the easiest way to get it on the computer. You can send it to your Google Drive. Or you can even get it from your phone, obviously, if you have access on your files on your phone, on your PC. We're gonna go and download it from the email we have sent ourselves. So wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, this wallet, we download it, we save it on our desktop. Once you see it on the desktop and you wanna open it, when you, when you try and open a file like this, it will probably ask you how to open it. If you don't know how to open a file, open it with Notepad. If you open it on a computer, you get an encrypted file. It is encrypted because we backed up our wallet with a password. You can do it another way. This wallet wants you to encrypt obviously your backup because if it isn't encrypted, anybody can get access to your wallet. But the hard part now is to actually decrypt this file on your PC. I know how to do this and I'm gonna teach you guys how to decrypt your Android backup. What we need to decrypt this backup is to install OpenSSL. OpenSSL is an encryption program and we can use it to encrypt or decrypt files but we only want to decrypt this file that's our mission our main mission because we want to get our private keys and we can get open SSL by going to the internet so we're searching for open SSL and we can use softpedia so we're gonna download it we're gonna use a 32-bit mirror if you have 64-bit you can use that if you have 64-bit you can also use 32-bit but not the other way around we're gonna save this file you need WinRAR or WinZip these are also free programs programs. So we're gonna save this and we do that on our desktop as well. So here's the wallet, there's the OpenSSL. We're gonna unpack the file and then we're gonna give it a location on our PC. We've unzipped our file and just to make it easy for ourselves, we are going to put it on our C drive. So you go to your C drive, you create a new folder, you call it OpenSSL, throw all the files in there, you move them to the OpenSSL folder. So now it's all in OpenSSL. Here we have bin. What this program needs is to be configured in Windows itself. Otherwise, we can't use it in the command prompt window, which is this window. What we're gonna do is we need to go to the system properties. So control panel, system, advanced system settings, environment variables. Within the environment variables, we need to put a path. There is a list of paths, as you can see here. We need to edit this list. And at the end of this list, you need to add this line. C double dot back and then the folder that we just created that's open with capitals SSL slash bin that's our path that we need okay and we need to add a new variable and that variable's name is supposed to be open SSL conf and the variable value this means that the configuration of open SSL can be found in this file here. What we can do is shift right click it, copy as path and paste it here without these dots. And as you see, we have C double dot slash open SSL bin open SSL this file. Okay, so I think it should work right now. Now we did set up our SSL. So we can open CMD and we can test if it works. Does open SSL work? Enter. Okay, OpenSSL works. As you can see, it opened SSL. If you want to exit a program in DOS, press Ctrl C, then it exits and then you get back to the original path. So what did we do now? We've backed up our wallet, we have installed OpenSSL, and now we're going to use OpenSSL to decrypt the file that we just downloaded. Okay, so let's do that. Here at the, the desktop, we have our backup of the wallet. So we're going to copy that to this folder. Okay, so what we're going to do is we rename this wallet a little bit different. Let's just call it Android. Let's call it Android. That's a nice name for a wallet. 
We've copied it to this location. Now we need to go within command to that location. And we can do that by typing cd, change directory. And we're gonna go to c double dot slash open SSL slash bin, enter. Now we're in the same folder. And how can we be sure if we press directory, it shows us this directory. It says we have Android C3 as you see. It's the same directory where we're at. What we're gonna do now is use OpenSSL to decrypt this file. To actually do that, you need to write, and it's a long sentence, but you, you can do it. We need to use OpenSSL. We're gonna use encryption, D-A-E-S, to CBC, and this file is MD encrypted with MD5 and in. For in we're gonna use android and then an arrow or out. Well we can name our out whatever we want to name it. We can call it android decrypted. Let's try it out. It's working. It's asking us if we can write the decryption password. And a decryption password is the password that you've created on your backup on your phone. This password would be uh, I wrote down Bitcoin Day Trader. Enter. And now it's done. It created a file called Android Decrypted. If we open this file, open with Notepad, we have another terrible file. But we're gonna compare those terrible files. Uh, Android Notepad. As you see in our screen, it is decrypted now. Even though we can't read what's there. But what we can read is the most important part. Here in the top you see org.bitcoinproduction. That means that it went well. And if you scroll a little bit to the right, you see a couple of words here. You see these words? Math, hidden, stay, endorse, actor, useful coffee, whatever. There, there is a list of names and this is an important list of names because this is your mnemonic code. Copy this and let's open a new notepad and let's paste it. Now we have decrypted our wallet and we got the most important part of that backup. This list you see here in your screen, that is the mnemonic code. Anywho, we have decrypted our wallet now. So we're almost there. We do not yet have our private keys, but this is not gonna be hard. This was the hardest part. What we're gonna do now is use this list that we've just created with OpenSSL. So OpenSSL, we're finished. Right now, you can go to the internet, to a website that I use, Ian Coleman's GitHub, BIP39. I've showed you guys before in another tutorial. What we're gonna do now is put this code here. You see, it's calculating, it's working, and we need to go to the BIP32 derivation path. We're gonna use our wallet, and we're gonna watch on our wallet our first couple of transactions. And you see, the first transaction all the way down was 1EJM. The second one was IBXF. And the third receiving address, because these are the receiving addresses, 1QFU. These are the addresses that receive bitcoins, the first free addresses. So what we need to do is make sure that we have them down here. Okay, they're not yet here. What we need to do is put in the right derivation path. I know that it is this path, slash zero. You need to write down this. If you have written down that, you will see the addresses here. So the first address is correct, 1EJMBX. So this is the right list. This is the list of our receiving addresses. And it goes all the way down and you can show even more, it depends on how many of transactions you have had. Every time that you've received an amount of Bitcoin on your wallet, you get them in one of the wallets of this list. And every time you receive one, it get the next wallet. First time you receive something, it will be the first. And the second time you have received something, the second. And so what we're gonna do now is use this list and put it down here. So these are the parent addresses. And what you need are the private keys of the parent addresses. So what you can do is copy this entire list, put them in this notepad. These are the first 30 wallets that I've used to receive Bitcoin. We also need to have the child addresses. Child addresses. And to get your child addresses from the Android wallet, we need to put a different derivation path. These are the parents, the zeros, and the ones are the first child addresses. And these are other addresses that you use on your Android wallet. I'm gonna copy these as well. And these are our child addresses. They are just as important. As you see, this is our entire list of wallets that is all connected to our Android wallet. These are all created using the mnemonic code. That's the way that this wallet uses a backup. We decrypted it. We have created created a list of our parent wallets with the parent keys and our child wallets with the child keys. Now that we have our entire list of keys, we can use it for whatever we want to use it. Yeah, we actually did it. Yeah, we got our private keys, man.
we got them back. We got our private keys and we can use them to do whatever we want. Okay, you guys, now that we have our private keys and we have exposed our mnemonic code on the internet, it is smart to always remove your funds from your wallet. So what we're going to do is send the amount of money that we still have left in our wallet into our Jack's wallet on the PC so that no one can steal our money anymore. So we're going to send coins to an address. Uh, uh. Uh, when you expose some personal information, be sure to send your money away. I'm gonna do this. There's nothing left in the wallet. That's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope I helped you out. And I hope you guys got yourself your private keys because they're very important. And remember, all this information is private. Never expose any of these these private keys or mnemonic codes. Even though I am doing it, I am emptying my wallet before I am uploading this video to YouTube. So there is nothing to find anymore in that wallet. And I've already collected my Bitcoin cash. I did that a while ago. And hope you enjoyed it. And see you guys next time.